Coral reefs cover less than 1% of the Earth's report, but they hold 25% of marine life. Do you know what that means? Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. Do you understand the importance of this? If the coral reefs get destroyed, all these fish, they go away. Okay, so I am Jesse Schultz, and I'm going to be talking about how overfishing affects the coral reefs. Alright, so uh, overfishing in coral reef areas causes a shift in the coral reef ecosystem. This messes up the ecological balance and biodiversity of coral reefs. So it's kind of like a domino effect on the food chain, essentially. So, this domino effect comes into play whenever overfishing occurs in coral reef areas. So, uh, every animal in a coral reef has a specific role, and if you take out one of these animals, then it throws the whole thing out of whack and it messes up the, uh, the ecosystem. So, uh, with the roles, some animals depend on other organisms, other organisms depend on those animals, and whenever you remove it, then it'll affect the, uh, the animals that depend on it. And not just on one side, it'll affect the animals on both sides. So uh, both the predators and the prey of the specific organism get affected, and then the predators and the prey of that organism get affected, and so on. So it's like a domino effect, right? So an example of this is grouper, which is a really popular fish to eat, is very important to coral reef ecosystems. Grouper feed on these fish called damselfish. So whenever we remove large amounts of grouper from the ecosystem, then the damselfish population increases. So what do the damselfish do? The damselfish eat algae and create little pockets in the coral reef that help it air out and grow more healthier algae. When the population isn't controlled by predation, like natural predation, then uh, algae can continue to grow and overtake the entire reef and eventually kill it. So only 25% of uh, coral reefs are designated as non-fishing zones. So that means that in the other 75%, People can fish all they want and take as many animals as they want, which completely throws out of whack the ecosystem and knocks it out of whack and stuff. Which in turn will end up destroying the coral reef. High sea temperatures cause coral bleaching and ocean acidification. Ocean acidification occurs when the sea absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere. Thermal rise leads to the melting of sea ice and thermal expansion, making reefs too deep to receive adequate Coral bleaching happens when corals get stressed out. The warm water makes them stressed and sensitive to the changes in the temperature of the water. If temperature stays high for many weeks, zooanthellates leave their tissue. Zooanthellate supplies the coral with glucose, Glycerol, amino acids, and these are all this all aids in photosynthesis. It's a mutualistic relationship between the two. It zooanthellae provides corals with beautiful colors, and when zooanthellae leave, the coral get a stark white complexion, which is coral bleaching. If too much zooanthellae leaves, then the coral host eventually dies, which is sad. When the temperature is above 30 degrees Celsius, zooanthellae's photosynthesis pathways are disturbed. So they can't supply color to the If the temperature is too low, then there could be a result of cell adhesion dysfunction. Cell adhesion dysfunction means it can't grow anymore. 
it. Climate change alters the ocean chemistry, which leads to ocean acidification. Corals and other sea creatures like snails, clams, and urchins can absorb the calcium carbonate they need to maintain skeletons, and when they can't, the reefs dissolve. If more ocean acidification happens, more corals will be destroyed. Pollution from land-based sources is a primary cause of coral reef degradation. Runoff often carries large quantities of sediment from land clearing, high levels of nutrients from agricultural areas, and sewage outflows, and pollutants such as petroleum products and pesticides. So, marine debris is another major cause of coral reef pollution. Marine debris is any man-made object that is discarded, disposed of, or abandoned that enters in the coastal and ocean areas. Plastic debris kills several reef species. Hundreds of human-made items end up as marine debris, including plastics from bags to balloons, hard hats to fishing lines, glass, metal, rubber, millions of tires, and even entire vessels. Derelict or abandoned fishing nets and other gear, often called ghost nets because they still catch fish and other marine life, despite being abandoned can entangle and kill off reef organisms and break or damage reefs. Uh, ocean acidification, what is it, first of all? Um, according to the NOAA, uh, when carbon dioxide is absorbed by seawater, chemical reactions take place. Um, these chemical reactions reduce seawater pH, carbonate ion <laughs> concentrations, and saturation states of important um, calcium carbonate mis uh, minerals. The collection of the chemical reactions that take place is called ocean acidification. And calcium carbonate minerals are the building blocks for the skeletons and shells of many marine organisms. Um, and coral reefs are made out of these uh, marine organism shells and bones. Because of um, in areas of the ocean where life is flourishing, the seawater is has an abundance of calcium carbonate missile minerals. <clears throat> but because of ocean acidification, there are many parts of the ocean where um, there is not enough calcium carbonate minerals, um, and it's undersaturated. So it can't support the buildup of the coral reefs. Um, and here are some facts. Since the Industrial Revolution, there has been a 30% increase in ocean acidity. And if humans stay on the current path, the NOAA estimates that by the end of the century, the surface water of the ocean could be nearly 150% more acidic resulting in a pH that the oceans have never experienced for more than 20 million years. Each year we destroy coral reefs through tourism. We build resorts on top of the coral reefs or next to them and we just, we just put our waste into those coral reefs. We also scuba dive and we go into the coral reefs and we touch them and we break them and we just destroy them overall. We also boat on top of coral reefs and we will run into them, destroying them, or we'll drop our anchors onto the coral reefs or we'll hit turtles or fish. Um, we also um, have a tendency to order sushi while we're on vacation or near beaches and this demand for sushi causes uh, fishing to put stress on the fish in our uh, coral reefs and it also causes for overfishing in our coral reefs. Now the way that we can fix this is because we can, we can plan carefully where we build our resorts and we can try our best not to pollute the ocean by recycling and making sure no plastics get into the ocean. You can stop ocean acidification and coral bleaching by saving and conserving energy. We need stricter laws in coral reef zones about fishing. Like you can only remove, we need a balance with nature essentially, so we need to take out 
only as many animals as is healthy to us and to the environment. And if we take up too much, it might be healthy to us, but it completely destroys the environment. So we need to find that balance, and we need stricter laws on fishing in these areas.